How to install PEX plumbing. PEX A, PEX B, and PEX C. PEX A. Dinosaur Pro! PEX B. The good guys are here. And PEX C. And we're not backing down. Yeah! So today we're gonna to talk about PEX. PEX A, B, and C. Sorry I'm late, but I showed up as soon as I wanted to. What? You're late. Make sure you stay till the very end because I'm going to teach you how to figure out exactly what brand packs you have in a plain and easy way. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe. That way you get all the facts and I want to hear your opinion as to what you think about what all we're talking about. Now, literally, there's different types of packs. There's different types of tools to join packs. But first, we're going to talk about packs itself. There's three different types of packs. PEX A, B, and C. And how do you know the difference? And is that really important? Well, it may not be very important to you, but if you're a homeowner, you need to think about it. What are you paying for and what are you actually getting? Because PEX A is more expensive than PEX B, but it also has good things about it and makes it to me probably more so worth it. PEX A is actually more flexible and more expandable. So if you know that you've got PEX A in your attic and it gets really cold, maybe you don't worry as much about it freezing and possibly damaging the rest of your house. Now, it could still happen, but PEX A has more flexibility. PEX A has more flexibility. So people ask me, when was PEX invented? PEX was actually originated in Europe in 1968. Now, we didn't get it over into the United States till 1980. Well, actually, it was the mid 80s. But here's the funny thing about this. I remember being a plumber in the mid 80s. Actually, it was the early to mid 80s. Plumbing problems got you depressed. And I remember when PVC started getting popular. I actually remember putting in an apartment complex in Garland and one of the inspectors came up and we're talking about cast iron pipe. We said, man, when are we going to be able to go PVC? He said, you know what? Garland will never go PVC. That stuff is it's unsure, it's gonna break, it's gonna crack, it's gonna do this. Now, almost every job we do is PVC instead of cast iron because cast iron starts decaying once it's underground. That's a neat thing about PEX. When PEX is underground, the plastic actually holds up probably better than copper in some situations. Now, not always, you need to know what you're looking at, but if you remember that PEX started in 1968 in Europe, mid 80s in the United States, and now over the last probably 15 to 20 years, it's really started gaining popularity because it's cheaper, much less expensive on the cost of the material and on the cost of the labor to put it in. I'm gonna show you in a minute how to put it together, both with an expansion tool and with a crimp tool, and it actually goes pretty quick. Make sure you stay to the end because right after I show you how to join each different type, I'm gonna show you how to look at the pipe and determine what type PEX it is, PEX A, PEX B, or PEX C. The A, B, C are not grades of pipe. There's a rating for chlorine and pressure and things like that. But the A, B, and C are actually how the pipes are manufactured. First of all, PEX is cross-link polyethylene, P-E-X, the X for cross-link. So cross-link polyethylene, the A, B, and C is actually to determine how it's manufactured. The A is manufactured with peroxide. The B is manufactured using silane and a moisture. And then C is actually manufactured using electronic iridation. So there's really not a lot of difference in the different type of pipes. But what you need to know about it are what we talked about. A is a little more flexible and has a little more expansion capabilities in case of freezing. And it's going to try to return to its natural state, to its natural size. So really what we're going to talk about today is PEX A and PEX B because that's what we use the most of. But the one thing that I want you to know is each type PEX can be joined with push together fittings. Now, I've got to tell you, I'm not real big on push together fittings. I know a lot of you plumbers out there are. It's newer, it's easier, different things like that. But anytime that you can just grab a fitting and pull it apart, that kind of makes me worry about, do I really want it holding a lot of water pressure in my house? Now, all of them you can't pull apart, there are other fittings that, you know what, they probably couldn't even cut this apart very easy. But one thing that I want to show you about the push together fittings, they've actually got a sleeve on the inside that goes inside of the pipe. So when you push it together, it creates a flow restriction. 
I don't like that. I really think that anytime you create flow restrictions in people's houses, you're causing problems. So I prefer an expansion type. So type A, you actually expand it, stick this fitting on the inside of it. Now the neat thing is, if you look at these, you can see the inside of this is much larger than the inside of the push together fitting. So I like that. It actually expands, comes over it and shrinks back down. The rest of the lifetime of this pipe, it is actually trying to shrink back down to its original size. So I've showed you those two connection fittings. There's a push together, the push together and the expansion type, but there's another one and it's actually a crimp ring. Now this one, just like the push on fittings, has a reduced interior. This one probably even more. So on PEX B, you actually stick this on the inside and that's how you join fittings. So I want you to think about this if you're a homeowner or if you're a plumber. Every time there's a fitting, every time there's a transition in direction or a joining of pipe, you've got something built in there that creates a flow restriction. That's one reason I really don't like the PEX B or the PEX C or using push together fittings on PEX A. So the first thing I'm gonna show you how to put together is PEX A. So whenever we're talking about the push together or the clamp type, A, B, and C will all three work with these. What I prefer, what I like the most is actually the A type, the expansion type. And the reason is you literally, you take the pipe, put a ring on the end of it, slide it in. And as you see, that fitting won't slide in there. But what you have is you have an expansion tool that will actually come in and expand this out, open it up to where you can slide this in and lock it down. Another neat thing about it is, say I expand it out and then I start talking to somebody and I forget to put it together. You know what? It's going to go back to its normal size. Then I just expand it again. So that's the thing about this pipe. It keeps retracting back to its normal size. Okay, so PEX A actually is really easy. You've got it in here. You take your expansion tool, you line it up, and then you start squeezing. And as you see, it expands, and it's actually turning just a little bit. Now you keep going until it comes all the way down to the bottom, and then I normally let it go two or three times. That way I know it's expanded out as much as I need it to go. Then you literally just slide the fitting in. And guys, that's all it is. For the rest of the life of this pipe, it is actually trying to shrink down back to its normal size. Now, one thing I wanna show you here, we talked about the difference in putting in fittings that can actually reduce your flow. If you look at that pipe and you look at the fitting that's in it, they're actually the same on the inside. So you're not creating a flow restriction here. By expanding this to go over the fitting, that's the same size as the interior of the pipe, it's actually not restricting at all. So that is the easiest way, I think, to join pipe. PEX A is really simple. Now, say you're in an area where you do need PEX B, and there are some reasons, I'm not gonna say not to ever use it, just as a homeowner or a plumber, make sure you know what you've got and where you're installing this. I would never wanna install PEX B up in an attic where it could possibly get cold. So PEX B, you're gonna need a crimp ring. And what you're gonna do you're actually going to go ahead and put your fitting in your pipe. Remember the flow restriction I told you about? There it is, we just put it in. Now you take this ring and put it over the end, and I like to leave just about an eighth of an inch right there. That way I can see the pipe. I know I'm not right up on the neck of the fittings where it could cause a problem. Now you've all heard me say, don't use shark bite. Well, this is one time I do use shark bite, but it's actually, just the tool. And as you see, I have my three quarter inch jaws in here. I've got the fitting in position. I've got the ring in position. So what I'm going to do is actually open my crimp tool all the way up. I'm going to line it up where I want it. I'm going to line it up right where I want it. Stick it in, get the ring right in the middle. And then once it's squeezing on it, I want to make sure that I'm not squeezing on that fitting. So I wanna make sure that it sticks out far enough at the end so that it does not keep me from squeezing the ring all the way in. Now I'm taking a little bit longer here than I would normally take out in the field. 
normally out in the field, I would probably have it in a position where everything's not going to be right up against it like that. So I've got it right there the way I want it. Now, you just squeeze. Once you squeeze it and lock it, which it's done, you can open it right back up. Now, that was really easy to do. And one thing that I really do like about this is they've got a tool. And if you look on here and you see the three quarter inch, over here it's go, over here it's no go. Meaning that doesn't work, okay? But if you go to the three eighths inch go and slide it on, it works all the way around. I know this is a good tight crimp all the way around. I'm not gonna have any problems with this. So really, that's the most important thing to remember about PEX pipe. Number one, know what size you need. Know what pipe you need, know what installation process it's for. Is it just potable water? Is that hot water? Is it cold water? Is it high chlorinated water? What do you need? And make sure you get the right stuff. So there are more than 20 different manufacturers of PEX pipe out there. So what you need to do is you need to look at your particular application, do the homework on what's gonna be best for you. Here where I'm at, we use PEX for potable water. We don't use any radiant heat systems or anything like that. So that is why I prefer PEX A with an expansion fitting. Now one big thing too is to know which manufacturers make different types. This is the big tip that can actually help save you from having a problem. Uh-uh, I don't tip. You don't tip? No, I don't believe in it. You don't believe in tipping? As long as you understand, PEX A is made by Upanor and Rehau. PEX B is manufactured by Watts, Viega, and yes, Sharkbite. And we do use their pipe. And then PEX C is manufactured by Roth and Nibco. And I've actually done videos about those. I think Nibco's got a great system too. There's a lot of different things out there. Make sure that you understand what is best for you. Now, people ask me all the time why I don't like push together fittings. To be honest, as a plumbing company owner, we go back and fix more of these than we do of anything else. I've never had to go back and fix an Upanor leak. And whenever we go back and fix the solder leak, it's because either the plumber didn't join it all the way because something happened, or there's just a hole in the copper. But these lines have been there 20 to 50 years. These, these are still relatively new, and we've gone back and fixed so many leaks, it's crazy. Guys, if you hadn't done it yet, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss anything. And if you know anybody that works with fittings like this, share this video with them. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.